nature doesn't negotiate. In Amsterdam, Egon Zender met with Greenpeace head Kumi Naidu and Hans Weyers, multi-director and former CEO of AXO Nobel, to discuss the urgent need to act on sustainability, as well as new networks between businesses and civil society. One of the problems is, and that's why I think this is a relevant interview, is the world is not politically organized in order to deal with many of these problems. If you think about climate change, you know, you would ideally have G20 or G5 to, to be the platform to make s the solutions. Or you would have the, um, the climate panel. Unfortunately, things go very, very slow, if at all. So, there, so there's two things you can do. You can complain about it and say it's not going to happen, help. You can also think about um, trying to organize all kinds of networks um, um, between different uh, players, stakeholders, and to find solutions that benefit all. Because if you wait until we have politically organized the world in the way that it has to be organized for some of the issues, it, we will be too late. So, so, and that's I think is something that uh, many corporations are aware of and working on it. And I think NGOs have also gone to a development thinking about this, but it's early days. The scale of the climate challenge is so enormous that the business community or government or civil society cannot deliver a solution on their own. This needs a multi-sectoral approach. A failure to make big substantial changes now is not only bad for society and the environment, but I would say it's a recipe for suicidal trajectory for business. The businesses of the future that will survive are those that start investing now in reconfiguring the businesses to be able to deal with the future. I think a lot of businesses are going to be caught with their pants down. They're going to leave things far too late. And, uh, and when, because you see, the problem is not only that the journey is still long. There is something which is the elephant in the room that political and business leaders in particular are still largely suffering from a very bad case of cognitive dissonance, meaning that all the facts are there that we're running out of time. At this point in time, we fail to create a sense of urgency with the larger populations. Yes. And probably because the actions are not right or the, the way we communicate is not right. But in the end, it has to come from, with support from the, 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 ma the masses. The masses, otherwise we will yeah, not no, be able to create I, change. I fully support that. And I we mean, fail. I mean, one, because when people ask me, okay. how is Greenpeace doing? My honest answer to that is we're winning some important battles, but we're losing the war and losing the planet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's the honest answer, really. One of the questions that you, you both mentioned was the sense of urgency or the lack thereof, right? And, and so what can, what can we do? The people who are in the leadership of this struggle, including on the civil society side, talk in inaccessible ways. So for example, I don't, you'll generally not hear me saying, uh, save the planet, save the climate or whatever. I, I usually speak more in terms of securing our children and grandchildren's future. Just by putting that frame, you are inviting more people to enter the conversation. And on a lighter note, I'll just say that my experience with business leaders, I don't know how you think about this, because I meet a lot of CEOs of companies in, you know, especially yeah. those, and my, my uh, uh, track record tells me that CEOs why in second marriages with younger children are very dangerous people. <laughs> no, 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 are, are more open than inspired business leaders we are seeing are recognizing that the old way of a business leader only thinking in terms of conventional capital, you know, the only capital that mattered was, you know, the capital you had in the bank or you were able to leverage. But today more and more business leaders are actually, and this is why, even though I take a lot of criticism within the civil society community for and so on, I still do it because what I'm seeing is that more and more civil society leaders, uh, sorry, business leaders, are uh, recognizing the importance of what I call uh, relational capital and social capital. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. the, 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 uh, that is the the, yeah. the 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 capital that comes from the communities you draw your labor, where you do your business, and so on. But here's where I think is the biggest challenge for us. 
The positive trend we are seeing in the business community is that more and more business leaders are saying, we need to do more with less. You know, we have to get smarter. Our footprint needs to be yeah. less. But you're still outside. Doesn't mean yes. you're a complete rebel, but you, you, you partner with the businesses or politicians to make things happen. It, it, it is important how you phrase it, because I, I think it would be naive and also dangerous to assume that you could enter into, let's say, structural um, cooperations, um, because an NGO like Greenpeace and corporations, whatever corporation you talk about, have different missions and, and different roles in life. But there are individual situations where it makes a lot of sense to work together because there is enough there is enough alignment in terms of the purpose uh, you know where, where, where do we want to go and then the combination of of different businesses in a value chain typically a lot of things happen in value chains rather than sectoral these days with ngos with universities or whatever um, that it can make a very strong strong impact but you always have to be realistic that these are different animals. There has to be a certain degree of, um, yeah, curiosity, openness, uh, cultural awareness, um, and then finally, um, you need people that are able to 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 build on trust. I think there is an important element of trust. If if we don't do something together, he must have the confidence that I'm serious, that I'm not just trying to buy time and, and trying to get him into a different spot. You see, if both of us sit down and talk about us having a partnership, we must be honest about the power differentials between yeah. us because he didn't create it, neither did I create it. We inherited it in our job. But far too often, partnerships between business and the non-profit sector don't work is because people feel that we have to pretend that we are absolute equals. In terms of you know popular support, we might be more support than your company, but in terms of numbers of staff, capacity, professional skills and all, you're gonna have, you know. So so it's understanding what the power differentials and, and being candid about it and, and being willing to say, you know, it's that's just the reality we have to manage it. And far too often there's a rather odd pressure put on people to sort of Immediately you walk into the room after three meetings, you have to show that you're in love with each other.